Hello everyone and welcome to Ask Uncle Buck. I'm your host, Uncle Buck. You got big buck questions, I got big buck answers. Man, it's a scorcher in North Carolina this week. I've got some scorching questions, so let's dive right, that was so cheesy, <laughs> let's dive in. All right, Josh Ray asked, why is it so easy to put clothes in the washer and dryer, but uh, not so impossible to remove them without leaving them in an unfolded pile on top of the dryer? Well, I for one can't leave them on top of the dryer. I have a stackable washer and dryer, so it'd be like up in the ceiling somewhere. But I feel your point. Uh, once you get them out of the dryer, you just kind of either put them in a basket somewhere or you just leave them somewhere and they just, that becomes their new home where they live. I don't know why that is other than the fact that at that point they're accessible and I think it's part of human nature to just go, well, yeah, that's, that's good enough. Um, sure. Yeah. You just Godspeed, little buddy. That's your new home. And when I need another pair of socks or a pair of underwear, that's exactly where I'm going, right there to the dryer. And then when I take them off, right back in the washer. I did, I did it like that for a long time. So I feel you on that one. I don't know why we do that other than uh, just a natural tendency to, to uh, whatever works best, whatever's most efficient. Patrick Raymond asks, are there any food and or food processing that you don't get, such as why bologna is uh, so gross and tasty at the same time? I do have one I don't get, and that is why people would drink coffee where the coffee bean has been eaten by an animal, uh, passed through this animal's digestive system, pooped out, and then someone plucked this coffee bean out of the animal poop and said, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna consume this. I'm going con to I'm gonna consume That's what I'm going to do. I don't understand why anyone would do that. That's really gross to me. I'm not a big coffee guy anyway. I'll drink a cup of it pretty much every day because... I get up at five in the morning, and uh, and when I get to work, like I've just God, I've got to have something to get me going. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that I would drink poop coffee. That would be kind of weird. Hub Baker, I was wondering how did you get into podcasting and all that stuff. I've told this story before. Uh, obviously, if you're seeing this video, you might already follow the page. But I have a podcast called "Here's What I Don't Get." Me and my uh, first co-host, Joel Chaco. Uh, had uh, been buddies and been part of some Facebook groups and we were uh, part of a fan base for another podcast called The Dick Show and uh, we had decided at one point that we would do a little a little vanity project podcast for that small group that didn't pan out we ended up not doing it and then uh, we decided to we had this long con that we were going to do there's a beef between The Dick Show and another podcast we were going to do a long con uh, to, to aid in that beef and um, that we ended up giving that up before we actually went live and just decided, you know what, we'll just do a real podcast and have some fun with it. And uh, everything kind of flowed naturally from there. So that's why I got into podcasting. I already had all the recording equipment anyway. I've been doing music for years. So it was just a natural step. Uh, and, of course, Joel uh, left the show a while back. He had some other stuff he had to take care of. And uh, Tab Burt's been doing the show with me. And we have a lot of fun. And we have some, some great guests lined up. So everyone, keep tuning in. We come out every Friday. You can find us on here's what I don't get com or patreon.com slash hwidg. Thanks for the chance for a commercial, buddy. Really like doing that. Okay, the one that I wanted to get to. From uh, Chelsea the Trap. Hey, Chelsea. Thanks for the question. What's a sacred cow in American politics you'd like to slaughter and barbecue? I had to think about this one for a little bit. Because there are so many things in politics that I'm actually in favor of, like the Constitution, or the separation of church and state, or the separation of powers, checks and balances, all these wonderful things. And I was like, man, what is something that I don't want in American politics? And I'll tell you what, I, f I figured out what it is. I figured out what it is, and it's probably going to get me in trouble for saying it until you understand my reasoning. And that is the idea of hate crimes, hate speech. Attaching uh, a prefix to any sort of legal institution. So I believe in free speech. That means I believe all speech should be free uh, unless you are like actively harassing someone. And I even have mixed feelings about that. But anyway, uh, the idea that like there's a crime and then there's a hate crime because you did it against someone of another race, I think that's counterproductive because it, it's just crime. If I, so I'm a white guy, obviously, if you're seeing this and you're actually watching the video and not just listening to it while you're doing your job, I'm a white guy. Uh, and if I shoot another white guy, that is a crime. But if I shoot another person of another race, 
uh, even if it's because, like, if, if I'm a racist and I shoot that person, which I'm not a racist, obviously, but if I shot another person because they were another race, then that's considered a hate crime or religion or whatever. But the fact is, uh, it's just a crime. And I think crime should be treated like crime. The motive doesn't really change it in my eyes. Like, you could say maybe I didn't intend to shoot the guy, like I wasn't trying to shoot the guy, but uh, that's, there's like different degrees of intentionality, but once you have intent, the reason behind that intent shouldn't really matter. It's a crime, it's a crime, it's a crime. Pro if you're going to prosecute one uh, at this level and the other at this level, then either prosecute both at this level or both at this level. I, I, just a crime is a crime is a crime. S the social issues need to be dealt with socially. I don't think you can legislate love between two people. It's just not possible. It doesn't work that way. That's why there's no such thing as social justice. There's just justice. Once you attach social to it, it's no longer justice. It's just people trying to enforce their opinions on other people. And I don't think you can do that. You can't use legislation to change someone's heart. You just can't. You can't do it. That's why whenever, I, like, I know when the gay marriage debate came out a couple years back, and the I was uh, something of a black sheep among conservatives at the time, social conservatives anyway, because I was like, you know, I don't, like, I'm a Christian. I, I have Christian thoughts about what homosexuality is and what it isn't. And, it's, and what marriage is and what marriage isn't. And I think that uh, you can't legislate a moral standard in someone's heart. If someone's gay, you can't you can't legalize that away. You can't just make that illegal. That's, that's someone's heart. That's someone's uh, convictions. So, and, and, and specifically with being gay, I there could be a, a range of other topics. So I'm going to cash out right there. Like the, the thoughts I have on it are deeper than that, but I want to cash out right there, so don't be offended. But anyway, uh, the idea of a hate crime, you, you're trying to attach a stiffer punishment to change someone's mind. You might deter the, the, the crime, or that someone might try to present a different reason why they, why they committed a crime, but you're not actually deterring hate. You're just, you're just virtue signaling. And that does nobody any good. So that's my thoughts on that. Thank you, everyone, for all the questions. And thank you guys for watching. This has been Ask Uncle Buck. Been Uncle Buck, you had big buck questions, and I had big buck answers. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye bye